quick overview. This is our agenda for today. So we have just finished up our virtual coffee meet and greet. Those of you that missed it, um, we, we were doing intros in the chat. Feel free to introduce yourself, say where you're from and how you work on IPFS. Um, overview, we're gonna have um, I think five different 15 minute presentations, starting with me, talking about all the cool stuff happening in the ecosystem. Um, then talk, Stephen giving you highlights from the 0.5 release that went out on Tuesday. Then Adine and Jacob who are diving deeper on some of those improvements and what you, what you get out of them. We'll take a short bio break for, for folks to pause. And then another two talks, one from Carson on all of the cool stuff happening with textile tooling. And then one from Matt over from Pinata about all the stuff they're doing around pinning. And then we'll take a 10 minute break. I have a special surprise for everyone. Um, and then we'll break out into three, uh, three breakout rooms, one for the 0.5 release, Q&A, diving deeper, um, kind of special topics, one on um, for folks who are new to IPFS and just getting started and want um, tips and tricks and to, to find each other and connect. And then one for lightning demos. And the, the link is actually down here if anyone wants to see the lightning demos. Um, and I believe this doc is in the chat, but Lila will probably stick it in there again so everyone can find it and stay, well, mostly on time. We'll do our best. All righty. Well, I wish I could see more of you as I'm presenting, but I'm going to go ahead and get started anyway. Um, I'm super psyched to talk to everyone, mostly going to be focusing on all of the amazing Q1 highlights in the IPFS ecosystem. It's been a freaking amazing quarter. Um, there's so much cool stuff that's happening thanks to all of the hard work everyone is doing in the wider IPFS ecosystem to push the project forward. So um, huge congrats to everyone. We have a lot of stuff to get through, so excited for it. Um, for those of you who are joining for the first time and maybe are, are new to IPFS or trying to understand what, what even is IPFS? I found this random link on Twitter and I clicked it and now I'm here. What y'all doing? Um, IPFS aims to make the the internet and the web work peer to peer. So instead of having centralized servers, which all, um, all devices connect to or send data through as middlemen, we want every device and, and every um, node in the network to be able to connect and send data directly to each other, um, which is faster, it's more resilient, um, and it helps um, kind of be reorient the web. Um, there's a couple, uh, like the main way that we do that is through content addressing, where instead of addressing data by where it's located in the network, so you have to go to that central server, we address data by what it is. Um, so instead of, great, you have to go to facebook.com to fetch uh, you know, baz.png, this particular image. Instead, we can address that data and anyone can serve it to you and you can be 100% um, you know, confident that the data that you're getting from random Joe somewhere on the internet is the thing you wanted. IPFS aims to address a ton of different problems. Um, I'll highlight a couple. Um, one is censorship. So uh, the idea that um, anyone can go and you know, take one central intermediary, um, kind of exert authoritarian control or um, hold on to data and regulate them. And then oop, no one can have access to Wikipedia anymore and it's gone. Um, the idea that anyone can, can serve the content that they care about. Um, another example is, is just the inefficiency of just hitting the same central server over and over again instead of fetching data peer-to-peer -peer and more resiliently. Um, and also um, resiliency. So if the net network suffers faults or if there's a breakdown, um, making sure that you can still get access to content. So links don't break and you can still find the data that you're looking for. Um, that works particularly for like the offline use case of we're all sitting in a room, we would love to collaborate on something, um, but oh no, the Wi-Fi has gone out and now we can no longer access Google Docs to take our notes, um, just making everything uh, work offline first. So IPFS is part of this, this stack of tools and projects. Um, we build on top of multi-formats, libp2p and ipld. Um, and we, we use these tools, we kind of joke that IPFS is just a, a trench coat wrapping IPLD, LibP2P, and Unix FS. Um, but, but this idea that we, we have a peer-to-peer -peer networking layer, we content address all of our data, and then IPFS is the part that distributes it in a global file system. We have, oh, you could probably, my slides are 
if I stop moving my mouse, you'll see my, my subtext. Uh, but we have a huge open source community. It's phenomenal. It's across the world. We clearly need to add some more nodes in, in Africa because it sounds like there's people from Nairobi pushing things forward. Uh, but over 4,000 contributors, I really need to go back and update this number, um, who are helping push the IPFS project forward from around the world. Um, we should add all of you and all of your nodes to, to this, uh, this visualization. And, um, huge thank you because this is really the lifeblood of the, the IPFS project and what makes it so exciting to work in this space and work with all of you um, just bringing together the community and being able to learn from each other and push push things forward all right a couple of fun metrics before we we dive into all of the awesome highlights um, we we run an IPFS HTTP gateway which we've seen um, grow a ton just in the past quarter the, the IPFS HTTP gateway is getting over 13 million requests per day, which is a four to five X increase um, since beginning uh, kind of end of last year, which is super exciting. And that's serving, you know, five, five terabytes of data or more. So really exciting growth and usage there. This is how folks who do not yet have uh, IPFS embedded either through IPFS desktop or running a node locally um, or um, kind of they're, they're, they're on their upgrade path to, to IPFS. Um, are, are using and bridging IPFS into the HTTP Web 2 world. Uh, we also saw a ton of amazing IPFS over the It's amazing. We now have hundreds of thousands of nodes um, who are all participating in the network. Um, a number of those are servers. Many of those are also DHT clients where they're um, benefiting, but, but you know, peers interacting and, and collaborating in the network. And then finally, most importantly, is Amazing ecosystem of projects that are building on IPFS. Uh, it's in. If not, uh, feel free to check Twitter. There is a, a link to constantly update and improve this program um, in Figma. So it's open to everyone to, to collaborate on. Um, but this is how we kind of keep track of and, and see all the amazing groups that are coming in and participating in the IPFS ecosystem. Um, and there's more and more happening, and they're doing amazing, amazing things. Um, Thank you all for being a part and, you know, helping contribute to keeping this list up to date. All right, so the main things to talk about, integrations, new IPFS powered sites that are coming up, and then IPFS project upgrades, things within the core protocol that, um, that we're making better and improving over the course of, of the quarter. All right, so diving into some of these. Um, First, and very excitingly, um, Opera launched default support for IPFS in their Android browser um, just, a, just about a month ago. Um, and that's super exciting. It's bringing, uh, it's just making it much more accessible and, and available for everyone to um, join the IPFS community, to make use of all of the, the proliferation of sites and projects that are building on IPFS. Um, and also really exciting to see from a, a browser upgrade perspective, these tools getting more and more embedded into um, the, the applications and um, browsers that everyone uses every day. So definitely excited to, to see, see that progress happening and um, you know, jazzed for, for what's to come from a browser upgrade perspective as well. Also launched this past quarter was Ceramic, which is building on IPFS and IPLD to um, do uh, um, kind of identity, uh, self-sovereign identity, a did layer that's um, building, building on top to do kind of authenticated documents, um, which is super cool and, and excited to see where that one goes. Um, we also, IPFS was um, launched as the default external storage system over Dropbox in Wolfram language, which is super cool. Um, so if you, if you are a Wolfram language user, would love to see um, the cool things that you, uh, you create and put on IPFS from there. Um, looking at the, the various sites that came to IPFS, um, it really was thanks to the amazing tooling that people have been creating in this ecosystem, the work Zappable Domains did with making it really easy to you know, use a template to get your site up on IPFS or um, drag and drop files, making it much, much smoother to just get up and running with a, a decentralized website. Um, also, the work that ENS did and Temporal, making it easy to upload folders um, and uh, quickly get up and running with a, a .eth address. Um, 
and the awesome work Fleek's been doing to automate website deployments from GitHub and make it very, very smooth and easy to, to go from uh, kind of one, uh, you know, building, deploying, and, and getting things up there. So I, that, that one was a fun one for me to like figure this out. And they have uh, SSL built in. So yay, now my site has SSL. Great. Um, also, we saw um, bigger, bigger websites also coming to IPFS. Um, Ethereum.org put their, their ViewPress site thanks to um, the, the tools that uh, I think Hugo and Chris Waring and a couple other folks uh, in the project created in order to get the IPFS docs site up on IPFS. Um, they, they use the same tools to get Ethereum up as well. So go to ethereum.eth.link and you can see the Ethereum website working on top of IPFS, which is great. Um, also, in terms of new exciting websites in the IQFA space, um, Brave put their their official store for all of their fun Brave gear up on IPFS using Origin, which is very slick, very nice. I bought a uh, a t-shirt, so I now have a Brave t-shirt from Origin bought on IPFS, which is pretty fun. So marketplaces are working. All right, and then the last section is project upgrades of all the cool stuff that's happening. Um, first thing that happened at the beginning of the quarter is we launched a beta of our new IPFS doc site, which is beautiful. It has search. It search auto completes to, to suggest the passages that you're looking for, which is really nice. It's much you know, better organized. It's cleaner. It's nicer. And it runs on IPFS. So definitely go, go give it a drive. I believe it's coming as the default very, very shortly. Also went out at the beginning of the quarter was the async await refactor, which was a huge deal for everyone who's using JS IPFS. Better debugging, it's leaner, it's smaller, it's faster, better in every way. Um, and huge congrats to the JS IPFS team for this amazing launch. I know a ton of hard work went into it um, and it was a long time coming. So amazing, amazing job. We also shared the collaboration we did with Netflix on making IPFS bit swap faster, um, specifically for when you have many, many peers that are all trying to distribute a shared image, um, like in their, their build process. And it was amazing to, to be able to work together. And at, at the end, if you look at the updated metrics for, for the 0.5 RC, uh, making transfer speeds about 3x faster, which is amazing. Um, also launched very recently, we, did, we started as a, um, as kind of a, an early access beta where we were testing some things out, uh, a kind of soft, soft launch and preview, but it's recently gone. Uh, 1.0 was the IPFS Dev Grants program, already funded over 10 grants and bounties with I think another you know, eight to 10 in flight as of now. So really cool stuff happening here, a great place to, to jump in if you want to you know, make a patch or help write some documentation, or you have a larger feature or integration that you want to work on. Um, so some really cool stuff there. Also, excitingly, coming out of, uh, out of some of those conversations is Rust IPFS. I hear Rust has a very passionate community that thinks IPFS should have been built in Rust from the get-go. So um, Equilibrium Labs has kicked this one off, and they're building a Rust IPFS implementation and community. So if you're, you're excited about a the, the Rust language or just getting to, to hack on a, a new IPFS implementation, definitely go talk to them. They're making awesome progress. And finally, the thing we're all here to talk about is the IPFS 0.5 launch, which was a, a big upgrade to Go IPFS and um, our public network. We're going to hear a lot more about that soon, so I'm not going to talk so much about it. And I'll let Stephen and Adine dive more into it. Um, but the, the, the place that IPFS 0.5 comes from is, is very much focusing on what, what our goal was for Q1 and Q2 2020 across all of the IPFS working groups, which was speeding up content routing. Um, content routing probably sounds like jargon. Um, we'll define this for people who aren't familiar with it. This is how, how you can find information in the IPFS distributed network and how quickly um, you can get access to that data. And then the, the next step after that would be transferring that data from the party that has it to you 
So you can say display it as a website or um, you know, have a data set that you've downloaded or something along those lines. Um, and so this was where we'd uh, identified in the network that we needed to make improvements in order to support the community. There was a ton of feedback um, that went into uh, identifying this as the pain point to focus on for the first two quarters of 2020. Um, and our goal that we set for ourselves for mid-year is to have 95th percentile content routing speed less than five seconds. Um, so we're, we're working towards that goal and making awesome progress. Um, a, quick, a quick snapshot of how, how far we've come just in the first three months. Um, back in our previous release, we had average content routing. Uh, it, this is like using a public network test that's like pinging between two nodes um, that we spin up randomly within the network. Um, an average time of eight seconds and 95th percentile of 42 seconds, way too slow. Um, and in this new updated improved release, we've gotten the average speed down to 1.5 seconds, so much more reasonable. And our 95th percentile is 14 to 20 seconds. And that's with only 12,000 nodes, which is a small percentage of the network, having upgraded to O.5. As more people upgrade, these metrics are going to get better and better and better because that means that we're going to have a better distribution of nodes participating in the DHT able to find and route content faster. So upgrade today if you want to see these metrics get even faster. All right, I have, I have a couple small sneak peeks and then I'll pass off because I know I'm already over time. Um, one is test ground. Two is all of the, the work we've been doing um, on the developer experience team, trying to make IPFS easier to engage with as a project, um, and then some more cool new integrations on the line. So first off, Test Ground. Test Ground is the, the tool that we, we built and used in order to uh, benchmark and test the DHT. It's a large distributed network. There's hundreds of thousands of nodes. You need to make sure that from a, a complex network uh, analysis perspective that the improvements and changes we are making were going to be better for everyone participating in the network. So very rigorous testing went into um, identifying the whether the improvements we were making were actual real improvements. Um, and so secret secret to doing this reliably was was test ground was the tool that we built. Um, and you'll hear more about this next week if you tune into Ready Layer One, where Raul, who's leading this project, is going to be giving a talk about it. So definitely check it out and stay tuned. Um, there's also a ton of awesome new DevX improvements that have been landing thanks to a lot of work by Hector on, uh, on the IPFS team, thinking about how do we make it easier to route people to the information they need and um, make it an easier experience of using and contributing to IPFS. So a couple of improvements he's already launched and made was one, um, making it more clear. We had, I don't even know, hundreds of different repositories in the IPFS org. So clearly marking which of these are, are archived or aren't under active development and, and iteration um, so that you can still find all the content and see it, but that you aren't, say, going to be creating issues off in some repo somewhere that, that no one is um, monitoring and helping maintain. Um, and then also made a new page specifically for getting help on the IPFS website, which has a lot of awesome suggestions if you're um, looking for technical support, you're looking to discuss a new idea, or just get in touch with like-minded folks. Um, so definitely take, take a look at ipfs.io slash help if you, if you want to be routed to uh, places where you can do that effectively. And to leave you with, there's a lot of awesome new things on, on the docket for, um, for Q2, some cool new integrations um, and projects that are happening here. So take a look at Rust. Um, there's a, a new set of projects around Nix um, and uh, QX, which is the, the tool that IPFS Wikipedia uses for doing their offline um, Wikipedia mirror and cache. Um, and then OpenStreetMaps, there's really cool things happening here, um, a lot of them coming through the, the Dev Grants program. So very excited about that. But most of thank you all for being an amazing community. Everything that you do is the, uh, what makes the IPFS project um, kind of a thriving, exciting place to be and helps push us all forward.